Alright guys, so now that I'm all cleaned up, changed, ready to rock and roll, today we are going over the most hated Camaro ever. And no, I'm actually not talking about my Camaro. This is a car that literally everybody hates and even GM regrets producing. But then again, a lot of people do hate the Dale Mero, but luckily <laughs> Dale Mero is not going to stay like that. And I have my 1988 RS that was completely restored, which I'll drop a picture in now. So when you think about like why a Camaro would be hated by everybody, you would think that A, somebody riced it out or put like a stupid body kit on it or something like that. And I'll put some pictures of cars that are like that, which obviously are hideous. But Jim actually produced one. <laughs> Now, as a lot of you guys know, I love third gen Camaros and I love Camaros in general, but when they first came out with the third gen body style in 1980, excuse me, 1982, they actually came out with a four cylinder Camaro that had 90 wheel horsepower. So I'm going to post a bunch of pictures of the Iron Duke. That's what it was. It was the Iron Duke engine that was used in like a lot of like S10s and like all sorts of different things. Um, they weren't a bad motor. They were a 2.5 liter um, fuel injected straight four. So they weren't a bad motor. But when you think about Camaro or Mustang or anything like that, like you think about muscle, you think about V8, and for the time, you know, a lot of those cars had like, what, like 160 horsepower in the V8s. They weren't power demons in comparison to today, but back then they were decent power numbers. They were quick. And a four cylinder in a Camaro was like buying a Prius, if you want to put it that way. But the sad thing is a Prius is honestly probably faster than the four cylinder Iron Duke Camaro. I'm going to just kind of read like a review and description of the Iron Duke engine. The Iron Duke engine was a product of the Malaise era, scrambled to sacrifice performance for fuel economy and meet the government's emission standards following the fuel crisis and the influx of J uh, Japanese competition. Obviously, out of that, we ended up getting one of the worst performing Camaros ever sold. As I stated before, the uh, Pontiac built Iron Duke engine was a 2.5 liter fuel injected push rod straight four, which essentially is just one cylinder bank away from a contemporary Pontiac V8. Like I said, the Iron Duke motor wasn't bad. It just wasn't something that was like meant to be in a Camaro. Cause like when I said before that, like when you think of Camaros, you think about V8. The Iron Duke motor had an embarrassing 20 second zero to 60. And I want you guys to honestly put that into perspective. We got cars running 11, 12 seconds, quarter mile stock nowadays. And back then, vehicles still weren't that slow. That's like my mom's town and country minivan, which is an 04 poop on this car. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, they did have a 132 foot pounds of torque, which was okay for back in the time. But when you match it with 90 horsepower, you're not going to have anything on the top end at all. And it was as a result, you ended up getting literally the slowest Camaro ever produced. So despite the fact of being literally the slowest Camaro ever produced, the, how do I want to say, kind of like a downfall of Camaro and stuff like that, obviously they bounce back. You know what I mean? Camaro wouldn't be where it is today if it wouldn't be for every step that took them along the way. Do I think that these cars are worth anything? Honestly, you don't know. People might honestly look and try to find an actual Iron Duke Camaro, and it might be worth some serious money. Would myself personally ever own one? I mean, if <laughs> it's a part of history, let's put it that way. It is a part of history with the Chevrolet Camaro. Obviously, GM did it with the full intentions of everything that was going on economically, and competition-wise, obviously, you had Japanese vehicles coming out with good fuel mileage, and, and GM wanted to stay on top of the ball, and I just don't think it should have been put into a Camaro. Now, obviously, today, we have four-cylinder Camaros that are boosted. We have, you know, obviously, six-cylinder Camaros are still a thing. Eight-cylinder Camaros are still a thing. Times have changed. Power numbers are different. 
Is it something that would appeal? Like if I was in 1982 ready to buy a new car, is it something that I would buy? Probably not. Back in back in that time frame, like if you were looking to get like a new car, I feel like you just have to get a V8. Like that's that's the Camaro thing. It's like the four cylinder Mustangs that were out for a while with I think the 2.3 liter. They were garbage. Like they were literally trash. Like they were not fast at all. But if that's something that you're looking for, go for it. But in today's world, if you're gonna have a Camaro, if you're gonna have a Mustang, you gotta go with the V8. So if this was your first time watching a video on my channel, I hope you give this video a big thumbs up. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below. I post all sorts of automotive content, also tobacco, all sorts of different things. Um, we do a lot of four wheeling, snowmobiling. I have obviously, I have a Duramax. I have an LB7 Duramax. I have two third gen Camaros and a four door Jeep. I'm actually looking to get a third vehicle, a vehicle for me to daily. I've teetered the idea of a Cobalt SS, a LT1 Camaro, an LT1 Vet, a C5 Vet. The doors are open and I am looking. So if you guys stumble across anything, send it my way, whether it's on here or on Instagram at Snussy Copen. Till the next time, guys, Merry Christmas and see you.